All right, everyone. We're going to get things started here. Welcome back to the final day of No Glitches Allowed. We're here raising money for the Go Rescue Pet Adoption Center. And I, I am excited for a uh, great day of uh, speedruns and speedrun content and uh, raising money for those pups. To introduce ourselves at the beginning of the day here, uh, we are No Glitches Allowed. And it is a charity event dedicated to speedruns with very few glitches or without glitches entirely. This includes no major glitches, glitchless, and any other run that doesn't have significant tricks or skips. If you're interested in getting involved or finding out more, make sure to join our Discord and follow us on Twitter to get updates about future events. And today we are continuing to raise money for the Go Rescue Pet Adoption Center. It's a dog shelter in Norfolk, Virginia, and we are work and Go Rescue works to provide a haven for homeless dogs, giving them time, care, and love they need to not just find any home, but the right home. Um, and and it is a great cause. We we see you know the videos in the background there of all all the pups, um, you know, large, small, everything in between, um, helping find new homes. So we've we've appreciate every dollar that comes in, and uh, you know we're sitting at uh, 956 so far. Let's see if we can't really push for the final day here, and 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 push that up as high as we can. Uh, the uh, the shelter is fully funded by donations, so uh, every little bit that they can get in helps them keep their doors open that little bit longer. Um, they have been open since 2011, and we want to make sure that that continues to stay true. All right, I think we're getting about ready here. We have our runner ready. Coming up is uh, Mirror's Edge, and we'll be uh, seeing Black Belt Ginger Ninja going through that. And the hard mode incentive was met earlier this morning, so look forward to that. Um, we do have another incentive coming up right after this run, though, for uh, Anno uh, Mutationum, which is beat the game on easy, and the incentive would be meet St. Nicholas. So apparently Santa is somewhere in the game, and if you want to see that happen, uh, make sure to get that money in. We need another $55 there. But without any further ado, Black Belt, you're up. Take it away. Okay. Okay. Well, hello, well, hello everyone. everyone. Welcome, Welcome to Mirror's, to Mirror's Edge, Edge Glitchless. Glitchless. I'm Black, Black Belt, Belt BBDN, BBDN. Call, call, me call me whatever. whatever. Uh, I'm joined, I'm joined on, on commentary, commentary by, by Soulmask, Soul Mask, who is a buddy, who is a buddy I, I met through No Glitch 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 Glitch. Hello. hello. Oh no. oh no, I don't think I don't my think commentator, commentator got, pulled got pulled in. Can someone pull in my commentator, please? please I, need I need them. <laughs> There's, my, There's commentator. my commentator. They just got pulled, pulled into the Discord. Discord. Hello, oh, say, say hello, hello Soulmas. Soul Mas. Hey, I'm Soulmas. Woo! Woo! Okay, okay. So they've so been, been sort of learning, learning the game, game watching, watching videos, videos, and they're going to be a buddy, buddy on commentary. commentary. More, more fresh, of a fresh face in there, so it's going to be fun. We are doing, we are a, doing a glitchless run, run. Uh, if you're, uh, if you're privy, privy to Mirror's Edge glitch, 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 it's kind of a gray, gray area, area what's and what's not in this game. game. We banned a lot of the, the big stuff you might, you might know from Mirror's Edge speedruns, speed like flying, flying through the air, air going, going out of bounds, like that. that. There's still going to be lots, lots of GC exploits and movements and stuff that we're going to use in this run, so it's still going to be very exciting. I've also been told that we've made a donation incentive. Normally I would play the game on easy, but today we're going to play the game on hard. I'm going to be a true gamer today. Timer starts, Timer starts once, once I hit the menu button, so let's just get into it. Timing starts in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go! Alright, here we go. First big skip of the game, I go into the menu and I skip the training section. So, that's the first second and a half. And now here we are. Off to prologue. So there's 10 chapters in this game, they're each like uh, 3 to 5 minutes, and in total it should be like a 50 minute run. This first chapter is called Prologue, and then it starts counting up chapters 1 to 10. There's a few bit of movement stuff in this game that's uh, you're gonna see a lot in glitch list. The first is a wall boost. I just did one right there actually. I have jump down to scroll wheel. And I'm gonna use that scroll wheel to jump quickly on and off walls, and that actually brings my speed up quite a bit. 
Normally, uh, Faith, the character in this game, runs at like 26 kilometers per hour. With wall boost, I can actually get up like right there, up to probably like 40, even 50 kilometers an hour. Like here, that's another one. Basically, any time there's a wall, I'm going to use it. The second thing you'll see me do, the, the next most basic tech, is bunny hopping, which is just a fancy way of saying that I'm going to jump everywhere I can. Jumping is like 4 kilometers per hour faster than running, so lots of jumping. There's a lot of fancy routes and stuff that I'm doing. If you've played this game casually, you might notice that it's fairly different than how a casual player might do it, but nothing too crazy. Uh, I can get over this fence, for example, with something called a glide. By abusing the collision, I can sort of glide off the top of it and get some extra height. But this prologue is going pretty smooth, some wall boost to end it. And we can just jump up some collision here to avoid staircases. Staircases are slow. This whole game is just going to be parkouring. There's a paper-thin story that I'll, I'll jump in and I'll explain briefly, but what you need to know is that Faith, the character, is a runner in a dystopian city where information is heavily monitored. So you need someone like Faith. You, a uh, citizen, need someone like Faith. You hire her to deliver messages discreetly by jumping through rooftops and avoiding the mainstream channels. And Another that thing you might notice is any time that a door comes up, uh, BBGN is going to be trying to kick the door or jump kick the door. It's actually faster to do that, or once he gets a gun, uh, shoot the door open, than to barge through the door, which is a little slower. So yeah. Kick the door right now. Yep, kicking the door means that I can do the next bit of tech, which I haven't explained yet, which is the side jump. Right there, you just saw it. Basically, any time I swing my hand across the screen, I'm getting instantly to full speed. That's an in-game dodge mechanic called the side jump. Normally, you just use it to dodge left and right uh, around enemies, but the added bonus is, like I said, it brings you right to full speed. So I use it to basically jump sideways, turn my camera into where I jumped, and then boom, I'm at full speed. And this is the first deviation you see because of hard mode. Normally, there are some guards there that I would just jump over, like Mario. But uh, on hard mode, the main difference between hard mode and easy and normal is that the guards have a little more health and I take a little more damage. Or rather, I have a little less health. I'm not sure which technically it is. But the result is the same. I die very quickly. So I'm going to do my best to reroute around guards um, because guards are actually really scary on hard mode. Normally, I would just sort of ignore them on easy. So that's the you get for the donation incentive. Uh, I'm going to die a little bit more probably than normal to guards, but... That's the fun of it, isn't it? I got to be adaptable. In terms of story, um, I skipped the cutscene, but I just met with my sister, Kate. And an ironic twist of fate, I'm sort of against the law, and she's literally a cop. Um, but she's a cop that's been framed for the murder of a famous political figure. So that's going to be most of the story, is going around investigating. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm at very low health right now. Please do not die. Please do not die. I'm going to be going around investigating. Uh, what's going on with my sister, uh, investigating leads, uh, and then eventually uh, helping her to be freed from jail, basically. Nice little wall run kick here. I use that wall run kick to get down to this uh, platform without needing to roll. There's a whole in-game mechanic where if you fall too far, you'll die. But if you fall an intermediate height, you can roll to prevent like this long, hard fall animation where Faith grabs her knee and waits a half second. So I avoid that uh, roll animation as much as possible. I mean, it's faster than a hard fall animation, but avoiding the roll altogether means I get to stay at full speed. So I'm going to do that. Yeah, coming up uh, pretty soon in the run, not too much further, we are going to have some portions, which are you're going to see a lot of the, uh, the manipulation you can do with actions to negate that falling animation and, and keep ourselves from dying, even though we're going to fall a great distance. Yeah, yeah, the wall run kick is really clutch. It's one of the animations in this game that actually puts you into a one frame grounded state at the end of it. And yeah, I used it there to avoid a roll. I'm actually going to use it here to survive a fall that I might not otherwise. I'm not going out of bounds. This is an inbounds area. I'm just kind of skipping like 10 seconds of gameplay to get there. And then another wall run kick here. I actually do an instant kick on the wall. Ugh, I missed it, so I'm going to have to take a roll. That's fine, just like a second time loss. But depending on when you kick on the wall, you can also manipulate the angle you leap the wall. You can have a whole degree in wall run kicks and kick glitch <laughs> in Mirror's Edge. Like, th this game system is very deep, and momentum is maintained, mo maintained in a funny way. For example, I can do a double wall boost to gain twice as much speed. And basically, I'm going to continue to gain speed. Another double wall boost on the same wall there. Another double wall boost here. This is a very fun section. 
I continue to gain speed uh, pretty much near infinitely up to like 120 kilometers per hour until I touch the ground again. So just jumping around, trying to chain together as many wall boosts and uh, bunny hops as needed. Another one last big tech that you're going to see throughout the glitchless run as we wrap up chapter one is the sliding wall climb. If you wall climb with horizontal momentum, you can actually get very large distances crossed. I used that to cross that big gap there, skip like 15 seconds of going around. That's a pretty hard trick, but happy to have nailed it first try. And we are off to chapter two. All right, so chapter two here. Uh, oh, just a bit of a missed jump there, that's fine. In chapter two, we are going to uh, talk to another runner contact called Rope Burn. Uh, not Rope Burn, excuse me, Jackknife is his name. Rope Burn's later in the game. Jackknife, we think, might have some information that's relevant to my sister's uh, framing. So, gonna run through some storm drains and then eventually uh, meet Jackknife. Lots of wall boost in this area. Like Go ahead. It might look like there's not much going on here in the Storm Dream, but it's actually a really cool area because there's so much wall jumping and boosting going on that uh, there's a lot of speed being built up that you, were, you really wouldn't notice if you were just doing it casually. Yeah, so you, what you saw there was I'm just gaining side jumps and wall boosts all together to keep my speed super high. It's kind of why my camera's being flicked around in all directions. <laughs> this next trick is probably one of the hardest tricks in the run, to be honest. Um, I'm going to use... I mentioned that I can survive long falls by kicking. The same thing applies to rolling and to grabbing pipes and poles. Uh, the only yeah, caveat this, is that... Is cool. Yeah, you want to explain it a little bit? Yeah, you're going to... Uh, there's going to be a roll, there's going to be grabbing a couple different things, so that didn't happen this time, but... Okay, ignore uh, that, ignore that, ignore that. I missed the jump. It's a very I, I tight setup. actually happened. Stream, you didn't see that. Actually, Stream, check this out. This is a really cool trick. So it's going to start with a roll, and then interacting with objects on the way down to cancel falls. So we never actually enter that fall animation, and uh, yeah, we, we get to the bottom here, even though we fell a great distance. Yeah, it's really sick. I'm also throwing in some of those like sidekicks to prevent myself from going into the instant death animation. A little quit out and reload here. Uh, save some time, rather than having to wait for the doors to open and close. Yeah, there's thankfully a, like a couple pipes running down there. We can sidekick and off of those pipes to uh, reset the fall, so that uh, we never actually enter that fall state. All right, let's go the risky way here. The run's been going well so far, so I'm gonna attempt fate. There's two different ways up the storm trains. This is the faster way. It's also the more risky one. There's not a single checkpoint along it, uh, so we'll see how this goes. If we don't fail, it'll go the other way. So I'm going to do a quick little sliding wall climb on this wall to avoid a animation. And then a nice cheeky jump here. Maybe another. Nah, I don't have a good setup for another sliding wall climb. Now there's a guard up here that I have to pray is kind of nice to me. I should be able to juke him. And then a little springboard here. There's actually lots of springboards in the game that... Uh, it's like an intended mechanic that lets you gain height. The developers put a lot of ones there, but... If there's a collision in like just the right place for a springboard, we call those hidden springboards. They're not developer intended, but you can do them anyway. So I do a nice little hidden springboard to get up to an area faster than I uh, normally could. Yeah, Another normally side the here. springboards would be, uh, they'd be colored bright red, so you know it's a springboard. But then there's other ones that are still springboards, but they're not colored like that. That's exactly true. And then actually an added benefit of playing on hard is that nothing is colored red. Normally this game has like a whole gimmick where um, ah, sliding wall climb went wrong there. That's okay, I just lose Again, a few seconds. Again, stream, you didn't see that. Just, uh, yeah, it's because I'm playing on hard. It's play I'm playing on hard, don't even worry about it. Uh, here we go, and that's what it's supposed to look like. Uh, this whole game has a whole gimmick where you, the runner, have runner vision, where, like, you can see routes through the city, and they're highlighted in red. Uh, when you're playing on hard, that red highlighting goes away, which for a casual player makes it a little more difficult to kind of know where you're supposed to go. Uh, believe it or not, I sort of have a vibe of where I'm supposed to go. Nice Here's little bit. Another interesting part. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, jumping off the top of that pipe is not intended, so we've reached this point before turning off those waterfalls, and um, there's actually collision on the waterfall, so we can stand on top of the waterfall. Yeah, again, sort of a gray area in terms of what is or isn't a glitch, but the fact that that waterfall has collision, we, you know, we just allow it in glitchless, and it allows for a fun run, a fun route, and just a good time. We've done a lot of discussion about the rules in Glitchlist. There's an infamous GDQ run about it. 
<laughs> if you're if you, if you know, you know. But we uh, we're just here to have fun today with the uh, glitchless approved rule set. I mean, if you've looked at a any percent run and, and, and you want to see exactly what glitches look like in this game, it's way more broken than this. So this is de this is definitely a, a a valid glitch list category. Yeah. Enough about that, though. We're finally at the jackknife section. I managed to squeeze my way through some guards with shotguns. Uh, fingers crossed. Normally, I don't worry about them, but on hard, I was worried. Now we're at the jackknife chase section. Uh, if I go fast enough, I should be able to pass him a little bit. He doesn't have collision, so it's fine. Another yeah, wall run kick there to a roll. are kind of hilarious for a speedrunner, because you're always getting ahead of the person you're chasing, and they kind of have to warp in front of you. Yeah, if you go too fast, you see jackknife start to teleport. He's cheating. Which is a typical jackknife, if you know the character. A few little wall boosts here, add those in, get some extra speed. I'm also going to try to... Ooh, lost a little bit of speed there, that's fine. Just a side jump to get back up. A little bit of on-the-fly routing. There's a nice little sliding wall climb here over a fence that actually saves a pretty decent amount of time. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Yeah, I only wall, ran, I only wall climbed for like a half second there, but even with that brief wall climb and an instant jump out, you can maintain a ton of speed and jump to a section early. A cheeky little quit out and reload. It's faster in-game time to do that than it is to run down the hallway. And that brings us pretty much to the end of Chapter 2. We've got one more quick section here where I have to do a pretty tight jump. Let me jump uh, into this cutscene real quick. But after I swing on this pole, I'm going to do a quick turnaround and try to... Hoop! We made it. Whew. I grabbed the ledge just uh, barely. So that's that's what you want. See? Nice little wall boost. And then into the final uh, cutscene trigger here. Off to chapter three. Oh, there's a fun trick coming up. Nice little... Uh, I went right there. You actually saw me t uh, chain a sliding wall climb into a wall boost. That's how we get... Mega speed, at least in glitchless. And when you have glitches, you can do other stuff to gain speed, but it's a very fast route there. <laughs> nice little fun a bit of collision uh, abuse here. I can sort of sneak my way around that fence. It's a little bit tricky, but the game has enough sort of coyote time that it lets you get away with it. Yeah, the fence is just a suggestion there. It really is. A lot of things are suggestions. Another wall kick here. I can get Speaking a really nice slide here. Oh. If you uh, see any barbed wire fences, uh, the barbed wire does damage you if you hit the sides of the barbed wire. Um, but if you're landing on top of the barbed wire, it doesn't do as much damage, so you can actually use the top of barbed wire fences as a platform to uh, to move around. Yeah, I tried to uh, use that and abuse that later on. The, you can't stand on a barbed wire for too long, otherwise it will kill you. But it's one of those things where the end that's just a little bit broken like the developers clearly uh, all, all the love to the developers there's a lot of rushing i think that went into getting this game out the door as it is with many like double a AA and triple a games oh we finally have the gun i got a gun now so Oop. let's jump there that's fine see we're not going to be shooting people though we're going to be shooting doors it's way faster to shoot doors than to kick them yeah i can for some reason doors just like instantly open when you shoot them in this game so i'm gonna use that as much as i can Hopefully another little sliding wall climb trick here. Yep, perfect. Saves a nice half a second. It's all about swag in Mirror's Edge. We just try to do the coolest looking thing possible. Uh, that happens to be the fastest, but I only do it because it's cool looking. Like that's, that is the culture of Mirror's Edge. Nice little wall boost here. And then let's see if I can just snipe the door. Perfect. I love this gun. I think it's very fun that I get to shoot doors. So I'm gonna try to throw it down this elevator shaft and then pick it up at the bottom. All right, well, threw let's it. See if we got lucky. I mean, it's down there. It's just it might fall in the hole. There it is. I see it. Ah, uh, marathon luck. I love this. Okay, we get to keep the gun now, so more doors uh, get shot. Yeah, there's a couple more doors, so we did save some time by keeping the gun. It's very exciting. I'm very happy to have this gun. There's one more door I get to shoot, so I'm gonna keep this gun for a little while longer. Okay, a little jump over the fence here. Oops. Yeah, the thing about side jumps is you can see me sometimes I'll side jump to get stuck. Basically, if there's any tiny bit of collision on the ground, uh, Faith will actually get stuck during the side jump animation. So I have to be super careful where I am and am not side jumping. I've sort of built up like a natural uh, knowledge of it where I can and can't side jump after playing this game for like nine years. 
Ooh, nice little sliding wall, climb wall boost there. Uh, but it can be very frustrating if you're a new speedrunner because, like, that little pole on the ground, uh, this little ledge here, like, you can get stuck pretty much everywhere with side jumps. So, that's an instance of getting stuck. <laughs> uh, it can be very finicky, and the added uh, complexity is that you're never looking where you're side jumping. By design, you're always side jumping at a 90 degree angle. Uh, it's always 90 degrees to your left or right. So, you have to sort of just know the collision, where it is, where it isn't, and that's one of the complexities of, uh, Kind of do this game at least at a top level. Cool little trick there. If you hit W right as the game loads in, you'll get instant full speed on the load in. So that's how I start at full speed there. Uh, another sliding wall climb coming up. Certain walls are like the perfect height for sliding wall climbs. And they actually give you an extra long sliding wall climb. This wall is one of them. So that's how I managed to make it over that gap. And then this little skip here is actually one of the biggest <laughs> skips in Glitchless. Uh, I'm going to do a sliding wall climb on this bit of collision here, and then grab this. That skips like a minute. There's a whole scaffolding like set piece here where you uh, jump around scaffolding. There's a whole scaffolding section over there. I skipped all of that with that little sliding wall climb. And bada bing, bada boom, we are at the end of chapter three and at probably one of the most cinematic moments in the game. It might be interrupted by the fact that that helicopter, at least on hard difficulty, just becomes like, a master sniper um so he just absolutely wrecked me and that's literally that's rng there's nothing i can do about it so just gonna do it again that's hard mode folks um normally if you play the game as intended the helicopter actually gets despawned uh, at some point but i have skipped to the trigger that despawns him so i'm actually just gonna do a little uh i'm gonna sort of break his line of sight for a second by crouching here these are hard mode exclusive strats folks and then we're gonna just gonna hope that that helicopter gets worse aim, please. Okay, still alive, still alive. We're not out of the clear yet. We gotta make it to the door. Didn't even touch me that time. That's RNG for you, folks. That's the end of the level. Hey, can you get a message to Miller? I need to see him again. We're doing pretty good. Uh, for reference, I'm like maybe a minute behind my PB, maybe 30 seconds behind my PB. So we're on decent pace right now. Off to chapter four. This is one of the chapters that in any percent we skip like all of it <laughs> so very different from the any percent route here if you're only privy to that route there's lots of animations in this game which can prevent a hard fall um one of them is kicking doors so i use the door kick there uh kind of see her like stumble uh to prevent myself from getting a really long hard fall animation other animations include like there's a vertical like kung fu kick animation that can override hard falls as well that i do sometimes um I don't need to do one here, but I'll show it off next time. So overriding animations is a big part of the uh, the run here, at least in terms of keeping your momentum up. Oops, a little stuck here. Let's just try this one more time. I'm gonna have a backup. Yeah, I have a backup. Let's go for it. Bit of funny collision there. Can uh, make it a little hard to get up, but that's fine. We're here now. This uh, little shimmy animation, if I get jammed in just right, can also prevent a hard fall. So you saw my screen go red. I normally would take a hard fall there, but because I went straight into the shimmy animation, that's no problem. No hard fall for me. And now that brings us to the first boss fight of Mirror's Edge. Uh, this is the Rope Burn boss fight. Rope Burn is a wrestler that we were tracking down in Chapter 3. Uh, Ex-wrestler, I should say. Turned businessman. And now uh, we're looking for him. Oh, found him. The rope burn fight is an intense fight, especially on hard difficulty. So I need to perfectly time a right click animation, a right click. That is the disarm button. I use it to disarm guards normally in the vanilla game. I, I haven't done any of that so far. Uh, the good thing is I don't actually need to time it. I can just mash the disarm button through this whole cutscene, and there we go. So I've done it. I've beat rope burn. Uh, he's going to go after kicking him in the crotch. He goes and hangs here. And then uh, I'm going to skip the cutscene and let's just assume that he lives. Yeah, don't worry about Rope Burn. Rope Burn is okay. He's fine. I skipped the cutscene. He's fine. Uh, these guards do want to kill me, though. Not because I killed Rope Burn, of course. It's completely unrelated. Uh, and now we're going to head down this elevator shaft. So, Mass, what do you what do you think of the run so far? Anything you want to add? I'm thinking this is actually a pretty good run. After watching you practice for a little bit, this is actually going very well. So I think you're doing great. Yeah, it's, I think I think this has been a we've been on a good pace so far. 
something you brought up is, um, you know, you do have backups for things. The part of running this game is knowing how to mitigate anything that's not going right and knowing the backups so you can keep the run going without losing too much time. So, uh, yeah, nailing the backups has been going very well. Yeah, definitely. It helps that I've been running the game for, like, nine years. You just kind of... Uh, I have some backups from, like, the old route, too, that I have stored somewhere deep in my brain. Uh, so I can pull those out. Uh, but, yeah, this game is a lot like... I compare it... In terms of, like, popular speedruns, if I had to compare it to any popular speedrun, it's most like Super Mario 64. Like, this, uh, Super Mario 64 also has a very deep, complex movement system uh, based around momentum. It has, like, a whole, you know, backlog of strats. I have to wait for this train to go by before I can proceed. Please don't kill me, guards. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me, guys. I am at very low health. I'm literally one shot. Uh, okay, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, knowing the backup strats is a must. I'm, I'm still at low health, but we're good. And no as far guards. as actually the way the game looks and the speed run, you, you, if you've ever seen Half-Life speedruns, it looks a lot like a Half-Life speedrun. Uh, and in this tunnel here is actually a cool trick called a, uh, I believe it's a stay. Strang Bunny Hop. It's based on Strang Strange. Bunny Hop. There you go. We have a French speedrunner who misspelled the word Strange as Strang when he when he did a Strang Bunny Hop. It's a Bunny Hop. I, I mentioned that like anytime you touch the ground in this game, you lose all your momentum. Uh, if you do a Strang Bunny Hop, that is the one exception. It's a Bunny Hop that doesn't lose momentum, um, and that's what makes it so strange. So I just did a little Strang Bunny Hop in that tunnel. Uh, they basically happen pseudo-randomly. It happens whenever the game expects you to land somewhere that you don't land. So usually, like, landing on a slope surface will trigger that behavior. And this is the end of Chapter 4. This is basically an auto-scroller now. Uh, so during this auto-scroller, I'll give you, uh, I'll give the host an option. Do you have any donations or anything you want to add uh, as we sort of wait for this to happen? Sure thing. Well, we do have a few donations that I haven't read off yet. Um, we have forty-seven dollars from from Maddie Yank. I wonder who that is. Um, I see that hard mode is not met for Mirror's Edge. We had best make sure that happens. And uh, then we have twenty dollars um, from Soul Mass Two One Eight, who uh, always wanted to meet the real Saint Nick, and that is of course going to the uh, donation incentive to meet Saint Nicholas in uh, Anno which is the uh, next game coming up here. So thank you for that. Thanks, y'all. Thanks for, thank you, Soulmass, for donating to this lovely hard mode run, which has indeed made me lose time. Really appreciate that. Well, it was Maddie, actually. <laughs> oh, it was Maddie. Gosh, that's what I meant to Blame say. Sorry. I'm trying to play video games here. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> so thank you, Maddie. Thank good. you, Maddie. And thank you, Soulmass, for donating as well. Um, an interesting thing about that auto scroll section is you you are actually scrolling on the train. The uh, hallway around you is the part of the game that's moving. Yeah, it's all it's all spoken mirrors. The game actually just moves the hallway, so very funny. Uh, I am now just gonna run past these guards. Hopefully, that's hard mode RNG for you. These guards are like normally gonna instant kill you. I actually have a whole setup here which I glossed over, so the game is giving me a chance to explain it more in depth. What you do here is you actually run into their trigger, run out of it, like this. And then what that should do is it should make it so they now have terrible aim. Ooh. I'm going to give it one more shot, and then I have a backup route. They actually have great aim. Yeah, it turns out they just are like... They've been practicing lately, and I kind of respect the hustle there. Uh, we built this into the uh, estimates, so we're all good. But let's try this again. In, out of the trigger, and then go. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Oh, no. Wait, never mind. Never mind. Oh, we're, no. fine. we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. They're not going to touch me. They're going to miss. We're all good. Okay, they shot, they shot me once, but we're fine. Let's just cut this way. Yeah! The only Imperial Stormtroopers could be this precise. Yeah, that's basically... They, they have Stormtrooper aim if I go in and out of their trigger like that. I have to go a little slow through this hallway um, to make sure that this next section actually loads in properly. So we should be good now. This elevator, yep, it's loaded in. All good. There's a few different sections of the game where if you go too fast, the game kind of freaks out. So uh, I just this is one of those sections. Uh, we're in chapter five now. I'm going to a mall. I was tipped off uh, after interrogating Rope Burn on that rooftop and definitely letting him live. Um, I was told that uh, there's something in the mall that I probably want to see, so I'm going to the mall. 
uh, not just for fun, but to sort of investigate again my sister's framing. Will you pick me up something from Hot Topic? I wish, I wish. It would be her aesthetic if you've ever seen the aesthetic of this game. Another little wall run kick here uh, coming up to prevent me from having to roll. And then here's that barbed wire thing that Swallmaster was mentioning. I can jump right on the barbed wire here. Uh, I didn't land on the little ledge, but that's fine. I can just do a little wall climb sidestep and then get up there super duper fast. There's a whole Another guard that you actually, you hear the music coming in. The guards are actually spawning in right now, but uh, I pretty much avoided them. <laughs> Another interesting thing with the barbed wire is, uh, like I said, if you hit the side of the barbed wire, it does a lot of damage, but it also has some knockback. So uh, if the speedrun also uses that, when you hit the side, you get some knockback and uh, we can use the momentum of the knockback to, uh, to also move faster through some sections. Yeah, there's lots of... the barbed wire in this game is just all a little bit buggy. It's, it's another one of those animations that gives you the one frame grounded state, so... We can use and abuse it, especially in the, uh, the any percent category. In this, I try to stay away from the barbed wire, because it's just a little spooky. Especially on hard difficulty, I really, uh... I can't take the damage. Okay, I can hopefully... Jump that went guards. well. Yeah, no, that's actually what you're supposed to do. So I, I manipulated the RNG, something, something, and I'm just going to do the yeah, same so thing again. Yeah, so this time it's going to work. Yep, perfect. Didn't have to go around the guards exactly like I planned. That's hard mode, folks. Having fun here. Hopefully a nice little cheeky sliding wall climb wall boost here. Ah, I didn't get the wall boost, but I did manage to uh, skip a bit of it. Oh, there we go. Okay, ignore that. We are falling all over the place. Just a, another example of how... The movement can be quite tricky when it goes wrong. Uh, everything is momentum based, so if I lose momentum, it can be hard to get it back. But we're back on track now, so. A little wall boost here, wall boost into kick on this wall. Ah, missed it. There's a little quirk in this game. Here's, we're gonna get nitty gritty just for a sec. There's a quirk in this game where if you wall boost on your character's right side, sometimes the game will just turn you around 180 degrees for no reason. So you have to be really careful. It usually happens if you scroll too slow. So that's what happened there. I got turned around and I lost my momentum. Normally I can mitigate that, but in that one specific instance, I just hit a wall. That's all right though. We can just side jump and get back instantly up to speed. And we are coming up on one of the hardest skips again in Glitchless. Uh, this is probably one of like the three hardest. I am going to essentially try to jam myself into a corner. I have to be constantly holding jump for this trick to work, so I'm going to use a free scroll mouse to do that. And then if it all goes well, I have to do another really perfect jump. So let's see if I can get it here. First, jam myself in the corner. I didn't get the jam high enough. Okay, let's try this a few times, and then I have a backup strat. There it is, we're jammed. Now I'm free scrolling. Okay, line it up well. Stop free scrolling. And now a quick tight jump here. Ah! Oh! So close, so close. We'll try it one more time for the marathon. If it doesn't work. Yeah, we we'll go gotta see this. Come on. It's not marathon save. There it is. Beautiful. Oof. That still probably saves time over the intended route, like 45 seconds. But it's probably about even now with uh, the backup strat, and that's all right. We didn't lose too much time, so that's fine. Ah. Tried to get fancy there, it's fine. We'll do a different backup strat here. So yeah, that skips a whole section where the guards chase you and you have to go in an elevator and poof, it's a big time save. In any percent, we actually do a whole glitch there to get past that section, but in glitchless, we have to get a lot more creative, which is why you'd see me doing a, free, a whole free scroll and some tricky jumps. It's a very hard trick. It took me a few hours to learn, uh, but I'm happy that I managed to get it and show it off at the marathon here. I have to wait for this fan to stop mentioned that, um, that he is using a free scroll mouse and he has the kick bind into the mouse. And the reason for that is a lot of these tricks with these kick jumps are frame perfect. So if you weren't using a free scroll, um, it's pretty much impossible to do a run like this. Because you would be nailing uh, hundreds of frame perfect uh, kicks throughout the run. Which is, uh, to say the least, not something a human would normally be able to do. Yeah, the con some console runners are cracked. The game runs at 30 FPS on console, and so some console runners do go for these frame perfect tricks, like with their shoulder button, like just a single input. Console runners are a different breed, but on PC we bind jump to scroll wheel, so not much frame perfect. The frame perfect stuff is still frame perfect, but it's a lot easier when you have a nice beefy scroll wheel 
like the G502, or even if you just have a regular scroll wheel, you can still get away with it. At least on console, they have a two-frame window, because around 30 FPS, so it, that does make a little bit more sense. Yeah, exactly. The window's twice as long. Okay, I gotta grab that pole there so the level actually loads in. Now the level's loaded in, I have to run to that section. This whole section gets skipped in any percent, so again, exclusive glitchless content for you. And inbounds, if you play the inbounds category. I can just run mostly past these guards. These guards are not very dangerous in the grand scheme of things. Uh, I am a two-shot sniper kill, but it's fine. They didn't kill me. Nice little wall run kick there. And then... There we go. This section also has guards, but I should be fine. Oh, as I say that, I take massive damage. So we'll see about this that. This is fine. This is fine. <laughs> not even worried. It's fine. We're good. They didn't even touch me. Oops. We lost some momentum there, so we didn't do the, uh, the correct animation. Let's try this one more time. There we go. Skip's having to grab a swing pull. There's the vertical kick there to skip the long fall animation. And then... Cheeky little uh, sliding wall climb over the fence here. Nice little cheeky wall boost there as well. And then we are just going to make our way through this little factory. This factory, we've been, uh, after getting the intel in the mall, we were told to come to this factory because there's something super spooky going on in the dystopian city, and uh, we need to see what the, the whole... We're unraveling a conspiracy here, folks. That's what you need to know story check-in-wise. So we're going to make our way through this factory now. With lots of... This is a little bit different than, I think, some of the other sections of the game. We have uh, some tight indoor movement that... It's a little bit different than the free-blowing rooftop. It's a little more claustrophobic, but we do our best to not lose our momentum even in these tight hallways. There's some nice falling right there. Yeah, that's that's another instance of falling just far enough to uh, not die, but still far enough to save some time. Nice little wall boost chain on this uh, wall here. We make our way down the hallway. We love just like flat stretches of wall in this game because you can just wall boost all the way down. And I, I, that's the point where I un, I unclick my free scroll and I just let it fly, you know? The perfect moment. It's just like real life. You can just, you know, run down the side of a wall and just keep on boosting off of it. It's very funny. If you play this game for a long time, especially if you speed run it, it starts to have this sort of Tetris effect where you see like geometry in the real world and you're like, oh, that would make a perfect wall boost. Like, oh, I really wish I could wall boost off that. It's very Ultimately, funny. this game is teaching you how to do parkour, so if you want to try parkour, go ahead. Yeah, well, I mean... Actually, I'm, not, I'm not recommending you. <laughs> you really that. shouldn't. You'll die. Especially if we do all the stuff I'm doing, but it could be fun. I mean, go to like a parkour gym, you know, learn your moves. And actually, don't do any of that. Just go out there, go to a rooftop, and just start trying it. You'll be fine, probably. All right. Go off uh, some barbed wire fences. Yeah, barbed wire fences are fine. Don't even worry about them. We are coming to the end of Chapter 6. Um, chapter 6 leads into Chapter 7, which is the boat. Uh, it's going to be making our way through a boat, uh, tracking down someone who is important to my sister's framing. So, coming right up on the end here. Nice little wall run kick. I actually use that wall run kick for positioning, rather than like losing fall height. The wall run kick, if you do it at a certain angle, pushes you away from the wall. So I use that to get onto that rooftop. Uh, again, just using every bit of movement and mechanic to my advantage to try to get where I'm going as fast as possible. And now we just kind of sit in this 30 second, 30 seconds, it's like a 10 second cutscene. Feels like 30 seconds, am I right? And here's a nice little trick, if I can get it, whew, where we use the pole there to cancel our fall damage and uh, we make it to the very bottom. Very this is a cool trick right here if you want to explain it, PBGM. Yeah. I haven't used it at all, but this game has an in-game thing called Reaction Time, which slows down time. You can actually use Reaction Time to mess around with the triggers in this game and skip certain loading sequences. So once this dialogue ends, I'm going to start it. So I just started Reaction Time, and now just as Reaction Time ends, the game has to speed me back up to, like, normal, real time. And as it does that, I timed it so it also speeds up a trigger for the load screen. And by speeding up the trigger, I actually managed to skip a good section of this boat ride. Normally this truck ride would be like 45 seconds, it ends up only being about 15. And bada bing, bada boom. Rapid fire, another trick coming up here. You saw me just bonk my head on a random ceiling. There's actually a trigger that extends just below the ceiling there. So once I die, I spawn right at that trigger. And I skip another minute or so of gameplay. 
Now, these lots of valves to turn here. We love valves in Glitchless. In any percent, you can skip all these valves, but in Glitchless, you get to see all the valves in their glory. Bit of funny collision here. You can use to skip most of this room. This room is very slow in the casual playthrough. You have to do some, like, lead shimmying, but not for us. And then, again, more just tight indoor movement here. Exclusive to Chapter 7. There we go. And some more valves here. A little bit of misalignment. Oh, there she is. She popped into place. There we go. I mean, these valves would normally be red and very aesthetic, but you can see now they are just a dull, boring gray because we are playing on uh, hard mode. Now this brings us to the whole reason we're on this boat. We are chasing down a mercenary um, who in game lore is an important character, but what you need to know is that they're a boss fight. Uh, right now they have a sniper rifle and they're gonna try to shoot me. Uh, I'm gonna basically just ignore the fact that they're shooting me and just do the fastest route. Oops. Surely that will not end up going poorly. Yeah, no, it's fine. They didn't shoot me. Okay, it got shot once, but it's we're good. And now we have to go into a scripted fight sequence. On easy mode, I actually... Um, I'm going to go on this side so I can push them toward the objective Yo, as I fight them. I was practicing this. At the beginning of a fight. That was awesome. <laughs> oh my god, this fight's going terribly. On easy mode, we can infinite combo them. Oh wait, I might get them the infinite combo. Yes, yes! Oh no, okay, wait, one more kick. Oh, uh, so close. Okay, we made it. Yeah, on easy mode, you can infinite combo them. On hard mode, they're a little more uh, slick. So I did manage to get the infinite combo for a little bit there. Saved a bit of time, but that's sort of a hard mode specific quirk. Uh, that boss fight on easy mode takes five connected hits. On hard mode, it takes nine. So we are certainly losing time <laughs> to like world record in this chapter simply on the boss fight, which is, uh, again, you get to see that live, in per uh, not in person, but you get to see that live, which Normally, no one ever plays on hard mode. Missed a little wall boost there, but managed to make it back with some side jumps. Keep our momentum up. This whole chase sequence, another one of those chase sequences where um, they're supposed to be ahead of me, the character. Uh, they just teleported ahead of me. There you go. But if I go fast enough, I should be able to sort of keep ahead of them pretty well. They're behind me right now, for example. Oh, got to turn around on... That one? Oh my gosh. Oh, they're gonna catch up. They did catch up. They definitely caught up there. They're ahead of me right now. That's alright. Yeah, the collision in this game can be a bit wonky. I'm gonna use the barbed wire here. Oh, never mind. No, I'm not. Didn't hurt me though, so that's good. And I have to wait for them to spawn in here. And I should be able to get an infinite combo there, here, actually. There we go. Perfect. Perfect last boss fight. And that brings us to chapter eight, the penultimate chapter. And we'll skip that so you don't get to see who that actually is. No, you'll have to play the game yourself. The game goes on sale for like five bucks every three months. So if you haven't played Mirror's Edge, I'd recommend picking it up. It's like a three hour playthrough. Play through it once or twice. The first time can be a bit rough if you don't know where you're going. But once you actually start to learn the game and its quirks, and especially if you learn like the side jump and some basic glitches, it can be very, very fun. A big jump coming up here. It's kind of a tight jump. It's literally just a jump, but it's oof, a little spooky. Especially because there's a wall to your left and right. So if you if you just time the jump just wrong, you'll actually get a wall run instead of a regular jump there. It's one of the few times where I think the game uh, sort of gets in its own way there. And you get auto-locked onto the wall. But it's okay. I managed to avoid it with a very last-minute jump and save some good old frames like three seconds probably this whole section is actually a little bit tight uh normally you're supposed to go down uh to the left here for this section i'm actually going to do a very tight wall boost on this pole here to skip over two barbed wire fences and skip right to the next rooftop that's very hard if you're first playing the game if you don't understand how wall boosts work but i've been playing the game for a while another blind jump here I set up with a side jump blind and then a uh, door cancel to prevent a hard fall. That checkpoint is brutal. There's no checkpoints. Um, like there's no, if you die, you'll just respawn at the very beginning of the checkpoint. You can literally lose a minute here. So happy to have nailed all the tricks there. Now we're coming to one of the most pleasant, puzzly sections of the game, the atrium. 
maybe if you want to add anything, so I'm feel free. I'm just gonna let this ride though, a little bit. Nah, I'm just enjoying the uh, the whole flow of this. You've got some excellent uh, parkour, yeah, going on. You didn't see that. That's uh, this this is actually going very well. The walls in this game have this particular area actually. The walls overlap in a way that makes the collision really, really janky. Um, this is like a known choke point for runs just because the walls have like kind of funky collision and I'm trying to go fast on top of that. This should work though. There we go, we're back on track. Ultimately yeah. as speedrunners we want to go fast but that makes things very dangerous sometimes. Yeah for sure, that's what you're seeing here. This is one of the few times you just like go up vertically and there's some really fun movement exclusive to that that you get to see. And that's the atrium. Let's just say that, uh, it, that we're on hard mode. Yeah, hard mode, you know what I mean guys? <laughs> hard mode changes the collision of the walls and it makes everything harder, so... That's just, you know, I'm just, I'm doing my best out here, but I don't practice hard mode. And I get a little, oops, mistimed that, but I should be able to get a nice little slide into the vent here. I know it's a lot of rats in the city. They got a problem. Oh, they do have a rat problem, and I think that's a that's a perfect cue for this next. I'll show off a little Easter egg here. I think it's a marathon tradition. I'm gonna quit and reload here. It saves time rather than having to descend to this room like the uh, proper way. Real time and in game time. And now we're coming to the part of chapter eight that's very fun. Um, Basically, my sister, I've spent this whole time trying to investigate why she's being framed, and like, I've made no progress. So she's literally in a prison van being transported to prison right now. Uh, and my solution is to shoot the prison van to save her. So I'm going to do that real quick. And then I'm going to trigger an Easter egg by shooting the center of the circle. And if you really want to see the rat problem, that's the rat problem. <laughs> Nice little Easter egg. There's lots of in-game lore about the rats, and it's just a cheeky little Easter egg there uh, that developers put in. Maybe shoot the center circle. So, anyway, yeah, you can see my sister. Her van crashed. She's probably fine. I'm gonna go save her now. I'm gonna use the rolls here to hopefully survive these falls in a way that I normally couldn't. And if the guards don't just yoink me, which they didn't, we are at the end of chapter eight. That brings us to the final chapter, the shard, chapter nine, where I'm going to save my sister who's being. Uh, I think she's been recaptured somehow, but yeah, she's like, she's, she's, she's stuck here. I'm gonna go save her. Now this chapter on hard mode actually is very hard, so BBGM's gonna be trying to avoid getting shot by too many guards, but um, like we said earlier, on hard mode they have Stormtrooper precision, and uh, BBGM might take a few deaths here toward the end. Yeah, these guards are like actually cracked. If chapter 8 is like the platforming, like, final boss of the game, this is the combat final boss of the game. So they're just going to throw tons and tons of enemies at you. And on easy mode, I can just run around them. But on hard mode, hooey, do they have good aim. So I'm going to try to be really tactical and actually purposefully lose time. I'm going to do a slide kick here to duck behind some boxes. Yeah. And we didn't even get shot once. I promise that's dangerous. I've died there before on hard, but we got really lucky. This next section I'm also going to take, this is like... This is 2014 routing, folks. Before we were fast enough to like run past these guards, this is what we used to do. We go to this guy, he has a little Uzi. He's a really easy disarm, so you grab his gun. And I'm gonna run past this guy. And then I gotta keep this guy down. He's like with a lot of help. Oh my God. He takes literally the entire gun to kill. But now that he's dead, I should be able to survive this section, no problem. I just gotta go into this, wait for this door to open. And then bada bing, bada boom. Once again, just we're like gonna use. It's like ahead. a normal person. You just have to empty an entire magazine until they bring it down. Exactly. Here's another section where I'm using reaction time, the in-game slow motion mechanic, to my advantage to speed up some triggers. I throw in some tabs there. That also just helps with the timing of the reaction time and uh, in-game time. It doesn't lose any time because this whole area is a loaded screen anyway. If all work happens. That should open 30 seconds before it should. There we go. So we saved another 30 seconds there in a way that's not very flashy, but is crucial for the glitchless category. Un unironically, one of the biggest skips to be found in glitchless was that dialogue skip. Are you me? I'm and now we are just going to make our way through some elevator shafts. Here's a fun uh, instance of how these swing poles are kind of broken. 
you can use the swing pulse to gain a ton of bite like that. They make you just go flying if you do it right next to a wall. So we use and abuse that to get up to that area just a tiny bit quicker than we might normally. They're not yes. broken at all. This, this is the glitchless category. What are you talking about? That's a bag right there. That's a hidden collectible. We collect those in the 100% speed run. But in glitchless, I uh, completely ignore them. Now, this is literally... I practiced this unironically for like an hour. Just for hard mode. This section's super easy on hard, but these snipers will two-shot you. So I'm going to actually play this like almost... Not casually, but like literally I'm going to just hide for a second. Okay. Break their line of sight. Now I'm going to hide here for a second. Break their line of sight. And now we're gonna go. Okay, so now only one sniper should be able to shoot me here. So I just hope he doesn't. Um, he probably won't. Okay, we're good. We're good. Okay, we should be fine. I made it past the most dangerous part. Now I'm gonna use this little bit of collision here. It's a bit of coyote Beautiful. time on wall runs. So I can use that to uh, jump over that fence and make it past these guards. No problemo. Oh, so happy that didn't give me any trouble. Yeah, jumping off that tiny little blue pipe with the coyote time after it is very hard. So that was, that was impressive. Very good job. Yeah, thank you. It speaks a lot to, like, the game's intricacy. You don't actually start a wall run until you are looking at the wall. So there's a lot of intricacy to how you're using your camera. I'll, like, move my camera away from the wall, then whip it back to the wall to trigger the wall run. That's kind of the technique you see me do there to get the wall run with coyote time at the perfect time. So this game, again, like, you could get a PhD in the intricacies of this game's movement. It's very fun, very deep. We have videos on YouTube if you want to look up, like, it's a video by a, a runner named Audra called Camera Movement Guide if you want to, like, get nitty gritty. I also have a movement guide that explains the basic glitches. But yeah, I'll stop plugging my own stuff and just focus on this final chapter, final uh, battle here. This is basically the last hard bit of the game. I'm going to disarm this guy and then just basically pray that they don't kill me. I have to shoot these servers to open the next area. So let's shoot these. And we're good. We're in the final 30 seconds of the game then. That's the last hard bit. I'm gonna do tree strats. Sick. Tree strats are a marathon must. The helicopter's coming up, so get ready on time. Yeah, here's another huge time save. This is a thir uh, minute long cutscene, but if I quit and reload, it skips the whole thing. And that brings us to the final checkpoint. I have to go a little slow here, otherwise the game will not let you like beat the game. It just, it'll the game will freeze so i'm gonna go a little bit slow hope the guards don't kill me and time should be in about five seconds time gg Whew. that was a decent run especially for hard mode in game time i have a live split open with the in game time that's a 45 11. that is mirror's edge glitchless anything you want to say uh soul mass before I, uh, I'll say my spiel. I just want to say thank you for having me. I had a great time. And thank you to uh, No Butches Allowed for uh, having this run. Um, it was really interesting to uh, to see Glitchless uh, Mirror's Edge when this is not a category you would normally see people running. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, everybody, remember to go donate. Um, this is a great cause that we're supporting for No Glitches Allowed 10. So remember to go donate. Yeah, I echo all of that. Definitely get out there and dona donate. I'll be donating a few bucks after this run to some fun incentives, so I encourage everyone to do that. Um, I'm gonna co I'm gonna pause the game so that I don't uh, copyright blast the uh, stream for you. Um, also, if you want to if you want to uh, speed run the game, go to speedrun.com/me. We got a great URL there, uh, or just mirrorsedge.speedrun.com. We have tutorials, we have a Discord, all the same jazz, and we're a pretty active community, a pretty big community, so come in and say hi, we're very welcoming. If you want to learn the game, uh, I'm always happy to help, and Glitchless is especially an easy category to learn compared to the complexity that is any percent. But yeah, go out and donate. Thanks for having me, this was a lot of fun. All right, well, thank you very much, Black Belt, and that was an amazing run. Uh, Coming up next, we'll have Anno Muta Mutation Gen, um, run by MASH. But uh, we're going to take a quick break to get that all set up, and we'll see you all here in a little bit.
All right, as a reminder, you are watching No Glitches Allowed, raising money for the Go Rescue Pet Adoption Center. Let's see here. If you'd like to help out with future events, now that we're coming up on the end of this, um, we can we always have volunteer applications before our events. They typically run alongside submissions and are announced on our Discord and Twitter. And keep an eye out for those if you're interested in running, production, tweeting, the tweets, or maybe even hosting live on the mic like I am right now. If you're just looking to volunteer for the first time, we'd be happy to help you get your foot in the door. And I can vouch for that as someone speaking into a mic right now. It's been lovely to work with. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's a good time for a good cause. So, come on in and the water's fine. The uh, next event will be No Holidays Allowed. Uh, and the news for that will be uh, coming up, obviously, after, after the event here. Um, and that event is open to all kinds of speedruns and showcases the offer, uh, runners have to offer, not just glitchless like this event is. Looking to showing off some amazing speedruns to watch as you bundle up by a fire with some cocoa. And a little about our chosen charity for this event, uh, the Go Rescue Pet Adoption Center. In uh, 2011, a local woman named Georgia uh, Onabaus, I always butcher her last name, I do apologize, um, <laughs> but, uh, but she lost her home and, and her only focus became how to prevent her family dogs from going back to animal control. Starting out with just an empty shell of a building, Go Rescue soon became not just a place for her current rescues but a shelter that has grown to rescue over 2,000 dogs to date and no signs of slowing down. And you can see the video of some of those dogs in the background of our break screen here. So that is what we're raising money for. That is what you're donating for. So you know it's good cause. And then uh, we, we do have uh, Anno uh, Mutationum coming up here in just a little bit and there is a bid war open for that to uh, meet St. Nicholas um, I'm told this is, needs to close about an hour into the run but it's coming up next so we don't have a lot of time and I believe that's uh, $55 still to go on that incentive so if you want to meet Father Christmas himself you know better, better get in a few dollars to help see that I'll, uh, I'll, I'll stop talking for a little bit. Enjoy the music. Hope you're all having a good morning. And we'll see you all with the next run.
My goodness, everyone. Thank you so much. We have a donation coming in from BBGN, our illustrious runner, who donated $55 who's, and saying puppies are goaded. Let's make sure we get Anno's incentive met and putting in the amount to get that uh, meet the St. Nicholas uh, incentive met here for the next run. So thank you again. And let's keep getting uh, keep getting donations in in any amount. Even a dollar or two is greatly appreciated. Yeah. 